Good day everyone, welcome back. Now today we'd be taking a look at something that has been somewhat overdue on this channel. This is the Academy Rebox of Zvezda's T90A, or basically T90. So as always, we'd be taking a look at the parts, the sprues, and I'd be giving some comments along the way. Without further ado, let's get started. Now the first sprue that we have here would be these parts right here, mostly big parts. You have the 125mm gun of the T90, the unditching log, then the um, sides of the hull. This part right here, if I'm not mistaken, this is the front glazes plate of the T90. And as you can see, upon closer inspection, there are a lot of fine details on the surface right there, especially the bolts. Then also, you have here the turret of the T90. And as you can see right here, that the turret is rather angled on the sides, as compared to its predecessors where the turret is more circular or round in nature. But other than that, you can see that... Sorry. You can see that the surface details are fine as well. You can see that they put a lot of effort into detailing the details on the turret. Then also you have here one of the sides of the upper part of the hull and also this one. So that's it for this sprue. Next off we have here the main hull parts and as you can see this would be the upper hull piece and there are a lot of um, empty spaces right here and this is because the assembly for these parts right here would be separate because academy did add photo etched parts for the grills right here so the initial or the Vesta t90 just gave you some mesh to do the grills. However, Academy, when they reboxed it, they basically replaced the mesh with PE parts. So basically the same type of assembly, but using photo etched. So you have to put parts around this end before you um, finish up the rear. So upon closer inspection, more fine detailing right there. This would be the other side of the top hull. Um, this piece right here goes um, beneath the front glazes. Then right here you can see the <coughs> excuse me the hull floor or the bottom half of the hull. And as is compared to other hull assemblies of other brands you do put the all sides first and then basically build around this so going back these would be the side skirts of the t90 so for this next brew you can see here most of the tracks and this one would be the link and length type of track assembly and as you can see here surface details are pretty good so they didn't shy away from detailing the tracks and from behind you can see that it's also finely detailed just a little pin marks to clean up but nothing a modeler couldn't handle and also you can see here that most of the guide horns or all of the guide horns are molded separately and as you can see they are finely detailed as well and you simply have to pop them in the middle and they do contour to the shape of the um track so just have to make sure that the guide horns that you'd be placing would be the right one for the certain track now going back this would probably be the rear hull piece and actually all the other parts right here as you can see there would be for the turret assembly so when I browse through the manual, which we'd get to later, most of the parts are for 
the turret and almost half the instruction manual would be the turret assembly itself so this one would be the front this one would be the front of the turret as you can see this would be where the coaxial is supposed to be then the mantlet main gun and whatnot so yeah most of the details here are for the turret and also the tracks that you'd be using and just a um, quick mention, as you can see there, this would be attached to the um, commander's gun. And they did put some detailing into that. There you go. You can see that they detailed the bullets attached. So coming around to this brew, you can see that a lot of parts here are smaller. And that's because most of these, most if not all of these, would be going to the turret assembly. And probably the others around the hull. Uh, just like this piece right here. So anyway, first notable, noticeable, excuse me, noticeable detail would be the external fuel drums right here. And this one would be the gun mantlet. Multiple assembly pieces right here. And then also, um, this is worth mentioning, they did, or Zvezda did add um, interior details for the commander's and gunner's sight. So if I'm not mistaken, this would be for the commander and this would be for the gunner. So you would be attaching that directly underneath their respective hatches and it would be a nice detail to look at should you decide to leave the hatches open so other than that um most of the parts here are probably for the um era blocks or explosive reactive armor blocks the hatches then also the external ammo boxes and sub assemblies for the Stora um, system, which basically um, helps protect the T90 from laser guided anti tank missiles. So, yeah, that's mostly it for this brew. Lots of um, parts to go about. But, like I said, most of them, most if not all of them, would be going in and around the turret. Now for these two sprues, they're both identical, but this is for the running gear. And as you can see, the road wheels are done separately. So you have the inner road wheel and also the outer road wheel. And also you have here the drive sprockets and also the idlers. Now once again, you see here more link and length tracks and this piece right here would be for the top part and as you can see it's evident in the guide horns that there would be um, sagging pattern so of course that would be resting on top of these return rollers you can see that um, there are fine details on the surface of the return rollers as well as the road wheels and also on the drive sprocket well done and going back to the link and length tracks once again, they didn't shy away from properly detailing this. So as for the other parts, they go in and around the hull. These would be the suspension arms right here. Then if I'm not mistaken, these panels would be attached to the side skirt area. Some individual track links and also guide horns. So other than that, I think most of these would be just um, other parts that you would see attached to the rear of the hull and also the sides. If I'm not mistaken, I think I might have overlooked the previous sprue. Uh, I think these would be the um, parts for the Stora 
um, system. So the one you see on the turret of the T90 or the one that looks like the eyes of the T90. So just a quick run through of this duplicate. There you go. Pretty much the same for the running gear. So next up you have the more minute details and you can see that the clear parts are stored in this Ziploc bag. There we go. So most of these clear parts would be for periscopes, headlights, and also the Stora sighting system. Upon closer inspection, you can see that the textures for certain parts are done quite finely. Next we have here the decals. And you can see that the decals for this one, for the T90, are rather generic. So they just put numbers here and um, some guard markings. So pretty generic and if you would be doing a specific unit for the T90, I think it would be best to do further research on it or procure aftermarket decals. Then around the rear, we have the photo etch parts for most of the rear or the grills of the T90. So as I mentioned earlier, this Vesda version of the T90 only gave you mesh, just as is common with some Tamiya kits. But for Academy, they do replace that with these photo etched ones. Then also you have a string here for your tow cables, but I think it could be replaced with um, metal wire. So lastly we have the instruction manuals and as I mentioned earlier most of the parts that you would see especially the smaller ones would be going for the turret assembly. So from the get-go you can see that most of these parts right here are really for the turret and this is the probably the longest part of one's build on the T90. So we can see there that the turret top and bottom would be secured by these um, external plates right here. They would make up the shape. And then as you go along, putting more of the vision ports, the sights, the support assemblies, the ERA blocks, the storas, storage boxes, and I think it's become quite a standard for Russian tanks. So you have here the tow cable as well, thread, which you can probably replace with a metal one. The side skirts go in. And like I mentioned, most of the smaller parts or the other smaller parts go in and around the hull as attachment points or brackets. Then you go in and fill in the rest of the parts with the covers and also the grills, the headlights right here. Then the external fuel drums you see here. And also the additional panels right here around the front. And also you have here quite a nice um, side view of the T90. Then you can see more of the camouflage scheme. Again, um, you do have to specify which kinds of colors they're using here. Same goes for this part. This is a top view, which gives you a better look as to how the camouflage would be playing out on the surface of the hull and also how it affects the turret. So yeah, that's basically it for this Academy's Vesta T90. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a thumbs up. But if you didn't, leave a thumbs down. And then the gun, the 125mm, is a two-piece barrel. So you would have to eliminate any seams that would appear here. Then around this part, you can see um, the quick assembly for the upper half of the turret. And as I mentioned earlier, you do have photo etched for the grills here. And also another assembly for that other big hole here. 
So the assembly would be as follows and you would have to do that before um, securing the top hull to the bottom. Then over here you have some um, color callouts. Uh, it's not stated here but around the front. But ideally you would be using like flat black, silver, steel, wood brown, tan, dark green, khaki and clear red. For the dark green, I do suggest to replace it with Russian green or whatever standard the Russian army is using nowadays. And the khaki or sand, I, this would be for the lighter ones here, then the black around these parts. So their camouflage is rather unique because it's not, um, and the black isn't really prominent or it's just like splotches on several areas and then the khaki would be more visible as well and following a certain pattern that goes around and also affects the turret so yeah before going into this one must be um, very careful when analyzing how the camouflage would be done so here you have the sprue breakdown how many sprues there are and what letters they are also here and it does instruct you around the last page of this one to go to manual 2 and this is manual 2 so manual 2 is more on the hull assembly and you see here the assembly for the hull the return rollers the grills for this one the upper glazes plate the rear attachment uh, the rear um, panel for the hull and also the attachment points for the external fuel drums. Suspension arms over here. Some brackets. Then the road wheels. So ideally, um, Zvezda and Academy, well, they do follow the same instruction manual. Ideally, they would want you to put the inner half of the assemblies. So these are the road wheels and also the drive sprocket. They would have you put that in first, assemble all the tracks, then um, assemble it in, after which you would be sealing it up with the outer pieces. I think that would work as well, and if you're, if you're able to do this entire thing together, you'd be able to just pop it out for painting later on. So this piece right here would be the unditching log. And let me know down in the comments below what you think of this tank, if you have it, what are your feedback about it, and um, basically any comment in general. And also, if you haven't subscribed or you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell for any updates regarding new videos in the future. Until next time, keep modeling, stay safe. Goodbye.